Hello, Portland. How are you? Very nice to be back here again. Um, almost a year ago, I was up on stage, and uh, I'd have to say that the conference was an absolute thrill. So um, for those of you who it's your first time, you're going to have a great weekend. You're going to learn a lot, and uh, hopefully it's going to make your business grow and grow. What I'm going to talk about today is about the growth of business, but it's more about your growth with your business. So perhaps it's not so much about techniques, it's a, a little bit about your confidence and uh, where you're going as an individual. So a journey. So before I um, go any further, I just wanted to share something with you that happened yesterday that I thought was a bit fun. I'm, I'm not really a superstitious person, I'm quite a scientific person, but it's funny that I should get this in my fortune cookie, cookie at yesterday's meal. <laughs> I mean, I know Float On, they, they really do put a lot of attention to detail in all they do. The fact that they've actually, I don't know if it's Ashkan or Graham, they've actually opened up all the fortune cookies and put things like that in there. So I just, <laughs> I just thought, yeah, well done, guys. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's a bit too much, I have to say. <laughs> okay, so um, talking about growth. So I, I might as well tell you a little bit about my personal journey, just a little bit good to bring you into the picture. I know, hold on. It's not so much my personal journey, it's probably everyone's personal journey here now. If you've got a business, if you're a one-man band, two-man band, or you're perhaps just with a small company, you have had to have done everything. You're the salesperson, you're answering the phone calls, you're doing the administration, etc., etc. Here, here we have here, um, almost like the, uh, the Indian goddess of multitasking. She's got a, a telephone in one hand, an organiser in the other, etc, etc. But that's just for a normal, small business. You get into the float business, you're probably going to have to have another ten arms. But what that shows is that it's just a wonderful opportunity to grow. Wonderful opportunity to add uh, another three, four, five strings to your bow. So, um, I say I'm, I'm happy with this one, but the only problem is, is that um, she doesn't look terribly happy, does she? Perhaps if you've just got a small business and you don't like it, then that might be your face. But just imagine, just for a second, that she's happy. Because if you're in the float industry, that's most likely what you'll get. That might help. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Um, it's a great opportunity to learn. Yeah? You can refine your art in this business. You can learn about psychology, spirituality, human biology, accounting, finance, etc., etc., etc. It goes on. And those of you who've been running a centre for a while now realise that they can actually now fix things at home. They've become like a DIY expert. They know about plumbing. Um, so yeah, it is, it is a very, very interesting ride and you can only gain, you can only be enriched by this experience. So a bit about me, um, probably about the age of about 15, I got very, very interested in the mind, the body, um, meditation, yoga, science, philosophy, etc, etc. And now I'm 35, so that's actually 20 years ago now, Could, would you believe it? Constantly, constantly thinking, constantly learning, learning, you know, I studied human biology at degree level. I studied uh, alternative and complementary medicine, et cetera, et cetera. Always learning, always doing, always learning about NLP and psychology. And it goes on and on and on, like a very, very active mind. Not just an active mind, but also an active body. I studied to be a parkour coach. I like running, jumping, climbing. I like martial arts, I like yoga. I like doing many, many different things. So it's all about something, 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 but not really enough of nothing. So when I discovered flotation, it came as quite a surprise, seeing as my life seemed to be full up with content, with doing things, with thinking about things, with being immersed in this cloud of thoughts or these things to do or all these possibilities. So when I get into a float tank, and it's just dark and silent and peaceful. You can have this incredible human experience 
where all these years of tension, if you're living in a, a very busy life, you're always doing, 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 something, 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 and then all of a sudden, well, nothing. You just become aware of your breathing. Such a simple human experience to be just truly aware of just being, existing, breathing. It's quite a mechanical but very natural process. So inside a float tank, probably my second, maybe third time, I'd gone from being so stressed and thinking, oh, I've got this problem, you know, this, the, the world is, is this big and there's this problem in it and I can't solve it. And uh, that, you know, I couldn't see the wood because of the trees. So half an hour into the float session, to suddenly be aware of just, oh wow, I'm here. I'm, I'm human. <laughs> Does that sound funny? To think that I'm having a human experience, but surely aren't you always human? Well, of course you are, but you know, one of our human problems is that we can get caught up in this thought space. We can get tied along with this constant sea of things to do, an ever-ending list of apps and technologies and activities and things to preoccupy yourself. And you forget about just being. So you might perhaps be um, surprised that somewhere in all this experience of the, the last few years, I've also been diagnosed with ADHD. <laughs> <laughs> So it's quite funny now that I've, I've found a place where I can actually forcibly, almost, in the environment, do nothing. It could take me half an hour or more to get into it, but finally I found a place where I can just let things settle down. And it's wonderful. I'm very, very glad to be a part of it. Okay. So, I love floating. Um, it's one of my passions. And so I found Floatworks. They were the first place that I floated at. I've floated at other places since then. But about seven years ago, I developed this passion for floating. And I thought, well, after all these years of studying different things, NLP, psychology, etc., etc., and kind of getting somewhere, and then now I've suddenly found this drastic improvement, this ability to just be able to shut down. I thought, well, I've got to promote it. So I got involved with um, Floatworks in London Bridge. And um, I've basically been there ever since, pretty much. So, Floatworks. So, I've come on a learning journey, but the Floatworks is the world's largest flotation tank centre. Um, we've been open for 20 years. It's not 20 years combined experience. If you're talking about combined experience, we probably could be up 50 years plus. We're talking about just 20 years of experience running a flotation centre, growing from a couple of tanks going out on street corners and, uh, and dis basically distributing 75,000 leaflets in the first year. So the, the owners and creators of Floatworks, um, Tim Strudwick and Peter Marsh, really put in so much effort in educating a population that didn't really know anything about it. So it's quite a privileged position to be here today where actually a lot of people in London now know about flotation, but there's still a lot more. So it's just amazing the, the growth that can happen in a city. It could be your city or a local town, and perhaps no one really knows about it, but if you put the effort in, and with time, you're gonna get there. But the, the key thing is you've gotta learn from all this, and it don't just stick to the same thing. Leafleting may not work for you in your area. You know, the world has changed. But there are some very simple principles to marketing that I'll talk about later. Um, Another thing that I guess links into marketing is about the presentation of your business and the presentation of flotation. Um, now, there are ways you can do it where it doesn't really matter what tank you have because it's all about the experience, right? But there are an increasing amount of people who buy with their eyes. It's not about the promise of the experience or the nothingness or the rest, sometimes all they can do is buy with their eyes and think, that looks cool, I want to try that. So we've learned to cater that to a certain extent. Don't give them too much. Don't, it's not like an app for everything, like kind of lots of bells and buttons and whistles and things that, you know, wow. We just want to keep it simple but beautiful and enticing. So this is when we invented the isopod. 
Seven years ago, we started research and development. We've been operating the business for 13 years. We thought, OK, so we've used various different tanks, makes, models, floated in centers around the world, had thousands of customers through our door. What do we actually need to do with a tank to make it more conducive to a flotation experience? And that's essentially where the quest for what came up to be the ice pods started. So uh, five years ago, it actually went into production. And I'm very happy to say now we've had five very long, successful years where sales are increasing year on year. But we're always refining the product. It's not ever a static thing. So I just needed to tell you that. So. Also, we've learned that writing things down on paper, although it's practical in the modern age, we've got this amazing things called the internet. And we can tap into that. So we've developed some software called Floatbooker. Uh, it's now in the beta testing phase. And I'd invite all of you to look, log on to uh, floatbooker.com so you can actually put your, submit your email address and find out more. In fact, if you submit your email address this weekend, one of you will actually win a lifetime's free access. So it's very interesting. More on that, if you want to come to the stall and ask about the isopod um, and Floatbooker, please do. But really, this is not about just standing up here and marketing to you, you know, selling to you. Um, I want to see if there's something we can pass on that will actually help you. So let's talk about you. S where you're sitting now, breathing, existing, you as an individual, everybody, people up here, just where you're sitting now, just think about where have you come from, where are you now, and where are you going, what have you got to learn from this? People are running past your business at 100 miles an hour. Maybe in their cars, they're walking on the streets, maybe just in their minds. They're busy, 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 busy. And you need to develop the skill or refine the skill to be able to stop them. They're moving fast. You've got to help them to slow down. So how are you going to do it? You could just, I don't know, you're on the street, you've got some leaflets. Excuse me, can I give you... They've gone. Hi, can you? They've gone. Don't be rejected, because sometimes people have got their own agendas. They think you're trying to sell them something that they don't, that you don't want, that they, you know, that's not interesting, that's going to cost them a lot of money, and have no real benefit, etc. People are schooled by life into just ignoring people. So how are you going to stop that speeding person? Can I just uh, have a moment with you, please? Oh, it's gone. Keep going. Don't, don't be dejected. Do not be dejected. Hi there. I'm just going to give you this voucher. It's for a free flotation session. Try different things, like walk with the person. Oh, no, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm not interested. I'm busy. I'm in a hurry. That's OK. I'll just walk with you then. <laughs> I got you there, didn't I? Just think about how you're going to slow someone down. They're speeding past mentally or physically. How are you slow them down? You're at a party, a networking event. Maybe you're gate crashing a party, and you're the only person that you know there. What are you going to do? Just hang around where the sandwiches are. <laughs> Talk to the bartender. This is a perfect networking opportunity. You might think that they're all having a lovely time, and they all know each other, and you're the only one there that, and that's on their own, doesn't know anyone. You could potentially know everyone in that room. In fact, I've done this and with friends a couple of times. You can play a game. You actually go, oh, hi there. So I'm, I'm Peter. I'm here for the party. And, you know, just be chatting to them. Like, are you, who are you here with? Oh, yeah, I'm here with John. It's his birthday. I'm like, OK, right, John, birthday. OK, that's good. Right, well, really nice to meet you. And just be, oh, hi there. Are you here for John's birthday? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I know John. I met um, Simon over there. <laughs> oh, you know Simon? Yeah, well, we recently met. That's fine. I yeah. know, oh, what's your name? OK, great. And then you can just go on and go on. And before you know it, you actually know more people in the room than they do. <laughs> so from, instead of being an army of one, you're an army of everybody. Um, until they find you out and you get kicked out. But <laughs> <laughs> it's fun while it lasts. OK, so now's your time to take the stage and to be able to present yourself, to be able to have the courage, the presence, 
the level of confidence, which may be quite small at the start, but you've got to push yourself to get there. So it's your chance now to not hide behind your float centre reception desk, behind the curtain, behind your marketing materials. Oh, I'm going to do loads and loads of online media and I'm going to market, I'm going to do leaflets, I'm going to do everything. Don't hide behind your marketing. Because all of that doesn't really amount to much if you're not able to actually get on the stage. It could be on the street. It could be in someone else's business or a networking event. Get on the stage and actually be able to present yourself and go, look, I'm here. I re represent my business. I represent my interest. And just be confident in that. And it doesn't matter necessarily what they think about you. Don't let that, oh, they're not going to like me. They're not interested in what I'm saying. They may not be interested in what you're saying. That's fine. But don't let that affect this feeling of presence and confidence. So is there anyone in the room here that um, doesn't like public speaking? OK. And so what's your name? Oh, is that Shoshana? Yeah. Do you want to come up on stage? Come on. Promise you we'll make this a fun learning experience. <laughs> Yay! Mind your step there. Okay, if you'd like to just come around here. Right. So look, this conference is about learning, yeah? It's about networking, it's about meeting people, and taking something away that's going to be of benefit to you. So, Shoshana, yeah. we're going to give you something of benefit. We're going to help you have a really positive experience of public speaking. Okay. Okay, do you want to just hold that? <laughs> okay, but first of all, I'm going to put my fingers in your ears. <laughs> just, no, maybe not in them, just cover them. Right. Okay, everybody, right. So what are you going to do? So you're just going to, she's just going to, can you, can you hear anything? No. Okay. <laughs> she's probably going to, probably. Just hum, can you hum? That's really, that's very good. Okay, so what we're going to do, yeah? She's just going to say, hello, everyone. My name is Shoshana. I can hear you. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Shoshana. OK. And I'm, present I'm your presenter at the Portland Float Conference. And I'm your presenter. Mic's not working. Oh, it doesn't matter. Your voice is loud enough. That's fine. <laughs> OK. And I'm your presenter at the Float Conference. And then Portland Float Conference. And then you're just going to say, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. And then it's been a pleasure. <laughs> It's all for you. Take a bow. <laughs> take a bow. Take a bow. Thank you very much. Oh Thank you very much. You can take a seat now. So that's not bad, is it? So she doesn't like necessarily like public speaking, but we've just given her a very positive experience there. So that, just think, all those people out there who don't like public speaking, all they really need is a few positive experiences, and that will really boost their confidence. So. It's good to be here. It's good to be present and actually connecting with people, not hiding behind your fears, hiding behind your business by your, with all these different marketing techniques and paraphernalia. It's really good just to be genuine and connect. We're all human beings. Your clients are human beings. It's a very human experience. Thank you very much. Ha, 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 ha.